Ukraine nil, Belgium nil. And Ukraine are out of the tournament. Belgium qualify for the round of 16, but they are in second place behind Romania. This was the group where everyone was tied. It ends tied. Everyone is on one, one win, one draw, one loss after three games. And then the top two are tied on goal difference, but Romania has scored four goals in this tournament. That performance in the first game where they beat uh, Ukraine by 3-0 has really come to help them. Um, and then Slovakia on zero goal difference, Ukraine on minus two. So, yeah, Belgium finishing in second place. Like, Belgium have a lot of drive from midfield from KDB, but it's just, first of all, it's weird seeing KB, KDB drive into space because I'm so used to him playing in Man City. And every time they play, they're playing against a low block. So, to see this side of him playing and actually finding ways and him running into space and carrying the ball over long distances. Honestly, I it's just been long since I've seen that in KDB. The last time we probably saw that was in Vada Bremen. Because at Man City, you're always playing against a team that's playing a low block. So, again, that's just a solid, solid player, you know. Um, after the first game, they were not good. Second game, he really took the, everything by the scruff of the neck and he was like, I'm going to lead this team. Like, this is what is needed from my team to succeed. And he did more of the same today, but they just couldn't break down Ukraine. Ukraine... Um, as I, I, I didn't say it, but yeah, Mikhailo Mudrik didn't start the game. He was injured. Um, the threat of Jeremy Doku meant they had they played they decided to play with a back five and put uh, Team Cheek on the left, on the right, and Mikolenko on the left. But Vienko, Zvatov, and Zabarini were in the back three, and they really needed it because Doku was really causing them problems. Doku has, despite the the mistake he made in the first game, he's really dominated the wings up until his final end products. Like, he's really, really given teams problems. He's a nightmare to uh, game plan against. He really causes a lot of gravity in terms of, like, you have to send two or three, and every time they switch, then the other, the other side of the, or the other wing just has so much space, right? Um, yeah, I've been quite impressed by Doku. Despite the perform, the small... I've been impressed with everything. It's just the... The final, the final ball is lacking, but everything in between has been really, really good. Um, Lukaku as well has been quite strong up front. Um, I know he's he's, a, he's he's an easy punching bag, like, but today, yeah, he had he had like he had one miss that was like, dude, you're really rushing the shot after he did so well to like muscle the defender and get onto at the end of KDB's pass. But his his linker play, his energy, like Lukaku might be an asset to Chelsea, like. Just remember I say that. Just remember that I say that. Um, Trossard on the wing is not working. For the first game when he moved into midfield and they brought in Bakayoko and then they put KDB and Trossard in the middle of the park, that still works. Like, I don't know why they keep moving away from that. I guess you have to remove a midfielder in uh, Onana or Tillemans to have that. And also they were chasing the game, so they had to play with one defensive midfielder. Um, I mean, they still do, but uh, like... The other one is not really attacking, right? In that case, they had to have, I think they had Doku, they had Bakayoko, they had KDB, they had Lukaku and Trossard at some point for about five to ten minutes before Trossard was brought off. Again, another disappointing performance was brought off. Yuri Tillemans did not really impact this game that they wanted. Um, Onana was much better. He didn't lose the ball as much as he did, as he does. Um, what first gave away like a really bad ball at the beginning of the game, gave a really good chance to Ukraine. But after that, he was he was quite good. I was he was okay. He was good. He was good. Um Vertongen is the one who keeps defying his age. Like there are times I watch this guy play and he's just like, eh. He does things like he's so calm at the back. There are times where he's beaten and he looks, it looks so he looks like he's laboring at times, at times, on certain occasions when he's beaten. But majority of the time he's still solid. The people who I think really caused them problems, Dovbik had a really good chance to score early on. He couldn't. Remchuk as well had a chance. Like, they they had moments. They had moments where they could have taken the lead, but they just couldn't. And then when, and when once the Belgians get the ball, then they really go back into their shell. So they didn't, have, they didn't create many chances. They, they had an average tournament, to be honest. The person who came off the bench and actually was causing Belgian problems was um, Malinowski, the former Atalanta player. Where does he play, by the way? He plays in Genoa nowadays. Um, yeah, when he came on, like just his the threat of his shots from outside the box. If you guys ever watched him at Atalanta, he was a threat from outside the box every time he he loaded up that left foot. Like this boy is yo. 
And I remember there was a short Castagna blocked and it really hurt his ribs. <laughs> like, this guy is dangerous with that left foot. Um, Castagna had to stay down for a while. But yeah, all in all, Ukraine managed to get a point. Um, these guys are just playing for, you know, like to give their country hope. Because at this point, whatever is happening in Ukraine, it's they, there are a few moments that the country can come together and actually celebrate their them, you know. Um, so yeah, um, yeah. Rebrov, there's still a lot of work to do. The tournament was okay for you guys. Um, nothing you can really complain about. This was a good point holding Bel- Belgium nil-nil. But for Belgium, it's quite disappointing because now they're in second place and we'll have to face... Who are they facing next? Who are they facing next? Who are they facing next? They are facing France. They're facing France. So that is going to be our big game. Big game on the first. That, I think, is on Monday, if I'm not wrong. So, yeah. <sighs> one draw, one win, one loss in the group gives them second place and they've scored less than Romania. Second place for them. So we are going to do a whole breakdown about all those games, so don't worry. But yeah, that is how Group E ends with Belgium in second place and Romania topping the group. 